So today we heard the uh, longer version of the, the, the snippet that uh, I read out yesterday from the book of Tobit. Uh, just one little correction. Yesterday I said Tobit married Sarah. It's Tobit's son, Tobias. Tobias married Sarah, not Tobit. So I got that one wrong yesterday. Sorry about that. Just a wee correction. So today in uh, our gospel, there's, a, 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 I think, a very subtle point which the Lord makes, uh, which I think we should really hone in on. I think it's very, very important for the spiritual life in general. One of the scribes comes up to Jesus and puts a question to him, which is the first of all the commandments. Jesus replied, this is the first. Now, he doesn't just jump in and say, this is the first, love, love God, and then love, love neighbor. He says, this is the first, listen, Israel. Shema, Israel. Right? It's this, this uh, kind of reoccurring theme in, in, in Hebrew. It's, a, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, it, it's a hymn, it's a series of prayers, the Shema Israel, the, the listen Israel. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. But it begins with listen Israel. Do you know the way like, you, can, you, can, you can hear someone but not really be listening? You know, it probably often happens in school or in university where you're, you're sitting in the classroom and you're kind of, you're hearing it. But there ain't nothing going in. Like, it's just, uh-huh. It's like when someone, you know, philosophizes to you. Starts talking about philosophy. You go, uh-huh. Yeah. Burgers. I'm starving. I'd love a burger. If I had a burger now, I, I'd have pink sauce. Pink sauce, a couple of gherkins and lettuce. Absolutely. Existentialism. Yeah. Lettuce. Just a little Lettuce. Right. And like, you are a million miles away, so you're, you're hearing the words, but it doesn't mean anything to you. Uh, so the same can happen, actually, with Scripture. The same can happen with our faith, that the wor- even the words spoken by us may be the right words. Even the actions done by us may be the kind of the right actions. But the heart, the heart may not be in it at all. You know, this is why uh, the, the summary then of this scribe might, might well have been Nicodemus, we'll see. Uh, but the, the summary then, he says, to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself, this is far more important than any holocaust or sacrifice. So then, like, bringing a, a sacrifice to the temples, an animal to be slaughtered, I mean, it was a, it's, 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 it's a big kind of a liturgical event. It's, it would have taken maybe a day or two of preparation. If it was the Passover, it would have taken an awful lot longer to prepare because you have to buy your lamb maybe weeks in advance because obviously lambs the day before the Passover are going to be hard to find. So you have to plan and prepare all of this uh, and then arrange the sacrifice and, you know, all of that. But the Lord is saying there's something actually more important than that, you know, and that's the love of God. Now, we think, we think that's obvious, but I think for ourselves, for myself, it's, you know, have I got this in the right order? So what's the greatest commandment? Listen, Israel. So what's the greatest commandment? Listen, Ashling. Listen. It's, so when, when we're in the chapel, it's not about kind of, you know, our equivalent now of Holocaust and sacrifices are maybe, you know, prayers. Okay. But the, but, but, so what we're, what's, this, it's a careful thing that we have to get, get right here and, and I have to be careful to, to phrase it correctly. We're not saying that prayer isn't important, of course not, but the attitude with which we pray, the listening in prayer, the unity with God in prayer, that's more important than getting the prayer said. You know, you can rip through a rosary in no time and it can bear you absolutely zero spiritual fruit. If we're just, you're ripping through it, like, so it's, there, there are vocal sounds coming out of your mouth but your heart just simply cannot be engaged because you're, you're going too fast to think. One of our sisters was visiting uh, a family that, 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 that I know. And, um, and the family asked her, would you like to, to pray the rosary? And she said, sure, no problem. Now, obviously, she's not Irish. So if you're not Irish, you, you tend to pray a little more slowly anyway. If you, you, you generally will pray more slowly in a foreign language because it takes a little more concentration. Okay. So they started the rosary anyway. And uh, the family, um, they were, they were you, you, you've seen a drag race? Drag race? So this is a drag race rosary, right? So it's kind of, you wait until the blessing, and once the blessing has happened, that's when the lights go green, so you floor it, okay? So um, the Hail Mary was something like a, a top fuel car. It was, it was quite impressive. It was a, what do you mean, I've got a prayer for sins now, with men. No joke. For anybody who's, who wasn't, who's not Irish, 
That's the second half of the Hail Mary. All right, so, so Hail Mary for grace, Lord, so you and bless from Jesus. Then the second half is, Hail Mary of God, pray for sins, how talk to men. Now, it's, it's, it take, that takes practice. I've had years, okay? Um, I've got a collar, right? So that takes a lot. So the sister at this point actually burst out laughing because she thought they were joking. <laughs> she thought they were actually joking, but this was how they prayed. Now, they, could, they, could, they, they, they had a rosary down to five minutes, okay? But can, listen, Israel, can, can you unite yourself to God when you're praying that fast? Can you even hear what you're saying? Can, like, can your heart be engaged at all? I mean, it, it's nice that you're dedicating those five minutes or those ten minutes to prayer, but, but there's going to be very little spiritual fruit if, 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 if your heart isn't praying, if you're not listening. You know, and this is particularly difficult for, for our generation as well, my, my generation and the generation after me, um, where we're, we're so used now to technology and distraction, where we find listening, listening, which requires silence, very, very difficult. So you see that there are various tendencies then when people get into the chapel, they want, you know, they put, like, put on their worship music and be kind of journaling and reading and writing and then the holy hour is over. Again, it's good to listen to worship music as opposed to worldly music. Uh, it's good to journal and it's good to pray. But if we've left out the listening, we're, we're missing an essential component here. Because otherwise then we begin to think that prayer, it's about, it's about doing stuff, it's about doing things, and I have to, I have, to have a certain amount of prayer said, and if I don't, then, then my prayer is somehow insufficient or deficient, and, 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 and I have to be kind of, you know, I have to find a way of putting down the hour. Instead of, instead of listening, and again, you think of any ordinary friendship, if we think, oh, every time I meet up with Paddy, um, we have to go play football, and then we have to go for a drive, and then we have to go for something to eat, and then we have to, you know, we, just, we can't, we have to find something else to do, because there's, there's five minutes there, and we have nothing to do, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wash the dog, we'll wash the car, um, we'll, uh, do you know, what kind of a friendship is that? Can you not just, like, talk, <laughs> sit down, and just enjoy each other's company? So, similarly with God, we, we don't have to fill the time and be constantly doing stuff. In fact, if anything, do not do that. Because then we're missing, I'd say, at least 50% of what should be happening, which is listening. So we pray. And then we listen. And then we respond in prayer. And then we listen. See, if Jesus is the great teacher, when do we want him to teach? When do you want him to form your soul? Because if you're ripping through a rosary he can't form your soul because you're not listening so he can't reveal anything to you either about yourself this is such an interesting thing uh, that, that God reveals himself to man and God reveals man to himself so God reveals himself to us but he also reveals who we are to to us so often in, in prayer if we're doing it right we'll begin to discover things about ourselves Maybe things that we're not too proud of or things that we're not too happy with, things that we know need to change. But the point is, it became, it was revealed to us in the silence of prayer. Shema Israel. Listen, Israel. Listen. So then, like, for me as a priest, I have to be careful then that my celebration of Mass doesn't stop me from praying. You music ministry, same thing. They have to be careful that they're playing music doesn't stop them from praying doesn't get in the way of their prayer or altar serving or any service we may have in the liturgy that doesn't get in the way of us praying it still has to be uh, uh, an occasion of encounter with the Lord where I get to listen to him that's why moments of silence are, are, are so important I know we don't have a, a whole lot of silence in the liturgy um, it was a suggestion from a listener actually that we'd have more instrumental music after Holy Communion just to allow those at home or those here in the chapel to just have a bit of quiet time after receiving Holy Communion with the Lord. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God is the one Lord. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And if you get that right, then the second will flow from it. The second is this, you must love your neighbor as yourself. So in community life, like we have so many opportunities to 
choose our own comfort or the comfort of someone else. You know, in our in our study room, we have two chairs, like like my main. Uh, the, the presider's chair over there. So it's a little somewhat comfier with, with armrests, you know? And um, very like one would have, might have observed in primary school, there are some people who, who love rushing in and getting the comfy chair for themselves, <laughs> right? And so it's just one of those little things like where if I have it, it means someone else doesn't because only, there are only two. Okay, so if there are two gone, then if I have it, then someone else can't have it. So I have just very implicitly chosen my own comfort over someone else's. You know, same with like, there are certain seats near radiators, certain comfy chairs, whatever, throughout the house, whatever. If I, if I choose my own comfort, it means someone else can't have that seat. So these are all kind of subtle ways in which I can choose to love my neighbor as myself or love my, love my neighbor more than myself. There's an option of choosing certain sports, certain jobs, certain whatever it may be. And very subtly, I can choose what's comfortable for me, knowing then that someone else is not going to have to do the hard job or the long job. So what do I do? See, this is love. Love of God should flow into love of neighbor. It's very, very practical. Our, our spirituality as, as Catholics, as Christians, is very, very practical and tangible. And if it doesn't become tangible and practical, well, faith without works, what is it? Not much. Not much, unfortunately. And it's something that has really uh, hindered the church in the past as well, where people on the outside who have all that religiosity, it doesn't translate into, into love of neighbor, doesn't translate into charity, doesn't translate into forgiveness and mercy, doesn't translate into simple joy. But then the, that opportunity is, is lost. The, the children of those... Families won't practice, the, the, the parishes aren't renewed because those who practice aren't very inspirational. They, they're not a loving community. So, listen, Israel, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And from that then, love your neighbor as you want to be loved. You want to be loved with, with tenderness. You want to be loved with selflessness. You want to be loved with, with affirmation. Love that way. Love your neighbor that way. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Jesus, seeing how wisely he had spoken, said, You are not far from the kingdom of God. Lord, may your kingdom be realized in our hearts, in our lives, through our actions, through our choices, through our putting you in the first place, our listening to you, our following you, and our love of neighbor. Amen.